Dobr dan. Dobr dan sem. In Slovak language, you can say Dobrý den všetkým. And I think it's very similar, but I think you have also experience, like uh, they don't know the difference between Slovakia and Slovenia. Because a few days ago, my professor asked me, like, here in Colombia, where are you from, Jan? And I said, from Slovakia. And then in a couple of uh, minutes, he introduced me as a guy from Slovenia. But I think you have the same experience. All right, but this is not a stand-up comedy. So let me tell you maybe just a little bit background why I am focused uh, uh, on this issue, actually. I was doing my part of PhD in Argentina and then my postdoc in at New York University in New York. And I was trying to find out how can journalists really have an impact also on solution and so on. And didn't cross the line, let's say, into activism or politics. So that's why also this question, how can I contribute to solving public problems? And now it doesn't matter if you are a student, if you are a politician, if you are Slovak, Slovenian or whatever. So the question is, how can we do that, right? So first of all, I think what we have to do, we have to see bigger picture. What that means, bigger picture? It means that we have to connect the problems. So bigger picture, what means bigger picture, guys? It's, it's I think, not only when it comes to journalism or public problems, bigger picture is super important. But when we talk about bigger picture in journalism or uh, when we talk about public problems, that means that, for example, let's say domestic violence has an impact on at least 16 other problems, right? For example, if we decrease domestic violence, you can see that, okay, less murders, less suicides, better economy, and so on. So first of all, what we have to do, we have to connect all problems to see the impact of every single problem. Then we have to investigate what works, which means we have to investigate, okay, if we want to decrease, for example, domestic violence, we have to, we have to know also what kind of measure or strategy we have to use. For example, in the United States, uh, there's a strategy called focus deterrence, and it works really great. And then implementation, of course, implementation sometimes is in the hands of politicians, but not always. So uh, let's say we have to focus on three or three, let's say, fields or so on, uh, research, journalism, and politics. But because we are not politicians, we are going to focus mostly on research and also journalism. Okay, so our tools are investigative journalism, data journalism, and solution journalism. Sometimes, you know, for example, guys in Finland, uh, journalists, they say that there is nothing like investigative journalism because every journalism is already investigative, right? But it's only like a uh, question of perspective. But anyway, investigative journalism, data journalism, and solution journalism, that's exactly what we need. I, I couldn't expect, I, I couldn't imagine that, for example, I'm going to talk about mathematics because I don't like it very much. But this time, let's talk a little bit about data. So what we have to do, I think, we have to take six steps. First, search for impact data. And doesn't matter if uh, the impact data when it comes to Slovenia, like country, or Maribor, or in general or community, right? Then when we have this impact data, which means actually impact of one problem on another, then we have to create an impact data map. That's exactly what I want to show you, how we can create an impact data map only when you know six answers to six questions. Then you have to write an article, publish it, and hope that you can inspire someone that can, let's say, implement the measures. But not always, it's about politicians, sometimes we can do it as well. So first of all, now you can see just um, just example, for example, now you can see domestic violence. This is from the United States, right? So if we decrease domestic violence by 100%, I know it's, it's utopia, uh, but on the other hand, on the other hand, you can see just to understand the point, when we decrease domestic violence by 100%, so less homicides in the United States by 16%, less suicides by 6%, and less homelessness by 10%. And also economy can gain not 2.2 billion, because that's only about these two problems, but also uh, 8.3 billion, because there are so many other factors. But what I'm trying to say is, for example, we can calculate uh, the cost of one life, of course, not emotionally, but also from economic perspective. So this is like just the insight when it comes to a data map, right? So another thing, what we have to know is this one. You can see, for example, domestic violence you know, has an impact on education, economy, crime, 
poverty and health, right? But it's primary impact, but then you have secondary. So, so you know, if you have less education, more corruption, uh, more corruption versus economy. When you have poverty, then you don't care about the ecology that much and it's coming to the health. Also, of course, conspiracy and crime, but it's even more complicated because if you see, for example, if you have bad health, let's say, so it's much bigger possibility you are going to end up like a poor person. Then when you are poor, it's very normal. Then it's, it's very normal than when you are poor. So crime is much higher, right? And then when it's crime much higher, it's worse economy, worse education, worse economy as well. But it's even more complicated because sometimes you can see, for example, mutual impact, right? When you are poor, it's very easy to understand that you are going to end up a little bit sick and opposite as well. If you are sick, you are going to end up poor. That's pretty big possibility. And also education and economy. For example, all these, these two double, let's say, double problems are like brothers. For example, even when you can see education and economy, for example, United States, uh, they have better, uh, the best economy and also when it comes to ranking of the universities, also education, right? So they are together. So I think if we want to, let's say, um, change the tendency or trend of the problem, we have to focus on, on, on bigger picture, let's say. Okay, so what do we need? If you want to create data map, let's say in Maribor or Slovenia, right? What you need to do is you have to find this kind of information. This is information like nearly one or one out of uh, five murders victims were killed by intimate partner. It's all from the United States, right? So we have this information on 16%. So then formula is only if we decrease domestic violence by 100%, then it's going to decrease also homicides by 16%. And also, also serves, almost I said Fuente in Spanish. Okay, quality and quantity. It's very important to know what kind of data we want to obtain. For example, this data is great. 16% women in the United States are killed by the intimate partner. This one is like, okay, let's say 7 million victims are, let's say three times more likely to suffer from depression and anxiety. There's also data I'm happy that we have at least this one, but on the other hand, you know, it's only probability. So it means maybe uh, women are strong and only, I don't know, 20%, 30% uh, can have a problem and so on. So this one is better data than this one because probability is not going to tell us, all right, like uh, exactly the amount, right? So let's, so let's start with, uh, with uh, impact data map. So first of all, create an impact data map, follow your data. It means, for example, you are going to try to find out in Maribor um, what is, the impact of let's say car accidents on economy or whatever right so you have to formulate first of all the questions and first of all follow your data always follow your data because your data is going to show you the way okay what to do for example these six questions are pretty simple one but it's connected to domestic violence because i was focused in the united states on domestic violence but you can do the same with any other problem for example, how many homicides occur due to domestic violence? Yes, we can find out, I think also in Slovenia. How many suicides have occurred due to domestic violence as well? How many people suffer from anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder? Maybe as well, but this one, I have pretty good information from the United States. Let's see, because uh, let's see if we can find out something in Slovenia as well. Then economy, how many working days do a victim of domestic violence lose each year? How many young people have a lower chance of completing their studies as a result of exposure to domestic violence and poverty? How many people have become homelessness, homeless due to domestic violence? So if we can find out only um, these six answers to these six questions, you can create all data, uh, all data map, for example. So let's start with first question. How many suicides have occurred due to domestic violence? All right, so this is pretty simple. If we are lucky, we can find out the information like this one. So it's 6% and in total in the United States, there is a guess that it's, let's say, almost 3,000. So this is the easiest way. When you want to find out some data, you can just find out really good source and then information. Question number two, how many homicides have occurred due to domestic violence? All right, so this is exactly the information. 
from 1980 to 2008, nearly one of the 16 percent right so if you have 16 percent and we can talk about hey you can say but 2008 you know it's pretty old yes but it's during 28 years they were investigating police documents uh and so on and this is the result so maybe it's not the, the best one the newest one but it's really full as we say because it's during 28 years and calculation when you know that 16 percent of home, all homicides in the united states happened due to domestic violence, then you can just calculate. For example, always I was trying to mm, take a year 2019. Why? Because I didn't want to take the data uh, from, the, from the period, uh, from the pandemic period, right? Because what COVID-19 did is like all numbers are up and down. Everything is different. So that's why I think uh, 2019 is the best. Now also 2023, because I think it's after it or it's very different right now, all right? So this is also very easy. You have percentage, you have to calculate just amount of, of problems, homicides. All right, this is, this is a pretty important question, but don't worry, we are not going to calculate all of this. But the thing is how many people suffer from anxiety, depression, and this one, sorry, I have to call this one. I still have something, it's okay. Uh, how many people suffer from anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So we can say, we can say that 6.5 million, which is 8.5%, let's say, right? You can just calculate. I was calculating exactly average number and so on, because we know that 10 million people in the United States, over 10 million, have a problem with, uh, are victims of domestic violence, and two-thirds, but not Two thirds is not is not exactly, but let's say two thirds, six point five million. You know they have a mental problems like anxiety, depression, and post traumatic disorder. So when we know this number that six point five million, they have a problem due to domestic violence. You have to just you have to just find out how many people in the United States have mental problems, seventy six million, and then you have to just calculate the percentage of that. So it's pretty easy. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to calculate all right and this question is one of the most important questions why okay first of all um domestic violence and salud mental mental health in spanish again and mental health i think and i do believe they are silent killers of society why not be, uh, because for example i didn't know i'm going to study domestic violence but when i see really like i can see data that the impact of domestic violence is huge for example uh, at least we have data that domestic violence ha can have an impact actually on 16 other problems right so when we when we when we know the answers to these questions then come on it's not working sometimes it's working sometimes not okay yeah, i have to click like this okay now you can see derived information right this poverty obesity i hope so okay i hope so the right information so you can derive information from like uh, this information how many people suffer from mental disorders due to domestic violence 6.5 million also poverty obesity diseases unhappiness conspiracy and ecology and it's pretty logical because you know if you have mental problems so it's very easy to imagine that you, you are going to end up poor and also is is uh, very easy to imagine that you don't care about yourself, you can end up sick, you are unhappy, which means like you can say unhappiness, it's like private matter, but this private matter, let's say this private problem has a huge impact on any other problems. Because when you are unhappy, you don't care about anything. You are, you are also, you have this tendency to believe in conspiracy and ecology is the last thing that uh, you are worrying about, right? So how many working days do victims of domestic violence lose each year? So you can find the information, it's 8 million, right? And then you can just find how many working days are to in total or in the United States and just calculate the percentage. What is pretty interesting, it's only 0.019%, but when it comes to, po it's, it's not that much, but when it comes to, uh, okay. When it comes to derived information and unemployment, it's 0.5%. It's not that much, but on the other hand, it's only because of domestic violence. So when we have this information, 
you can just calculate uh, how many how many people are unemployed in the United States, how many people are unemployed because of domestic violence, and then you can just calculate. You know, it's very easy. Like uh, we are talking about what kind of percentage, right? So this is derived information. Question five. How many young people have a lower chance of completing their studies as a result of exposure to domestic violence, right? So you can find out information, like SIRS is really super important because you can find so many other information, but this is 6.6%, right? Mm -hmm. when, we have, when we know this, you can just find out how many young people are in the United States, right? It's this one, 73 million. How many young are affected by domestic violence is this one and percentage is exactly the same they said so we found out that okay almost five million young people have a problem to complete their studies only because of domestic violence all right 20. so derived information we can derive also from this information uh, uh we can derive corruption and this is also a little bit interesting because there's we can, we can find so much of research and studies. They say if you are more educated, you are you don't have this tendency to be corrupted. But also you can find some study studies and research that doesn't matter. You know, uh, I, I think you know this. Like the they say that the power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? So and we can see that so many people are corrupted and they have education. So it's a question if th there is a really a link or not. But uh, I think it is all all the studies and the research. What I was what I was reading, it seems like that. And education, for me, it's like um, it's 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 like domestic violence and mental health are silent pillars of society. And opposite of that is education. If you see education, if we can have educated people, everything would be different. And there's data. There's not opinion. There's not, there's not my feelings. We have so much data on that. All right, so now you can, okay, so derive information and now we have question six, the last one. And how many people have become homeless due to domestic violence, right? So together it's like, so we can find information that one in four of the nations, more than two, uh, 216,000 of homeless women are driven in the street because of domestic violence. So you can just you use normal calculations. So every fourth, so it means 54,000. But what I have to say is it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more because this study is great, but it says only the data on women, right? About women and so on. So it's a little bit, little bit higher. What is interesting, for example, what I found out that in the United States, when we talk about domestic violence, 85%, let's say 85%, because it's not exactly exactly the number uh, I would like to have, but yes, it's 85% are the, of the victims actually are women and 15% men. Just yesterday, I found out in Colombia, 99% of victims are women and 1%, you know, only 1% men. So, but okay, when you when you have this number, how many women uh, are in the streets and are without home, homeless, right? So then you can just calculate. Okay, we know we know uh, the number of all people in the street. So all so women in the street with domestic violence, ten percent. So ten percent of all homeless people are because of domestic violence, and we calculate only women. So the number is a little bit little bit higher. But sometimes you know sometimes. You, you have to play with the cards you have because, yeah, I can imagine I have great data and so on. But unfortunately, you, you, you cannot take you cannot find the data because it just doesn't exist. That's why sometimes, yes, I would love to have men as well. But and you can find, for example, uh, some study and so on. Uh, also men and women. But let me tell you something. You can have great study only on women. Uh, let's say. Uh, from 20 years, and then you can have a survey, but only 20 or 30 people, they say something. So much more representative. It's something that is, you know, like uh, the period of time, it's much longer and and so, so many participants. So that's another thing. Uh, and now it's working, yes. Okay, and the right information is hunger, which is pretty interesting because if you see, if we can go back, if you can go back, for example, 10%, 
of all people in the street, let's say. So they are in the street and they are homeless because of domestic violence. And these people also have a problem with hunger, right? Of course, like this one. But it's only 0.15%. Why? It's pretty easy explanation because so many people, they have home, but they are in financial situation that is not that easy for them to handle it and buy the food and so on. So it's, there are so many people, they really have home, but they don't have money for, or, on food. Okay, so now you can see um, uh, uh, like a little bit summary. So original information we have, it's homicides, suicide, mental health, lost working days, university graduation, but let's say lost university graduation. I think it's a little bit better and homelessness. And from this six information, we can derive obesity, diseases, unhappiness, ecology, poverty, conspiracy, economy, unemployment, corruption, hunger, right? But guys, this is only, only example. You can, you can focus on different problems. And now imagine we have all this only, we are talking only about domestic violence, but imagine if we can really see the bigger picture and the impact of all problems. I think that would be something. All right, and this is the result, and this is the reason why I'm happy to talk to you and, the, and why I travel and I teach that and I work with students, because um, my goal is to create a solving machine, which means imagine that you can just enter any data. Okay, I'm interested in domestic violence in, let's say, USA, and the measure, okay, we can we can reduce domestic violence by by hundred percent. Then you can just click the impact, and you can see exactly everything. So you can see like six categories: poverty, crime, health, economy, ecology, and education. You can see exactly numbers and percentage, everything here. So my point is, and I don't want to criticize. I mean, politicians or society, but I think we have potential that we don't use. Because imagine if we can connect all the problems with all the impact, and then we can say, okay, so what would happen if we can decrease by 50, by 20%, let's say, traffic accidents in Slovenia? And what would happen if we can also, let's say, um, decrease uh, the number of mental health problems? And then you can just click, like play, boom, it's impact, and you can see, wow. And this is sometimes, when I see politicians and they are talking about this, but they don't see bigger picture. It's nice to, for example, decrease and focus on homicides, crime or so on. But when we see bigger picture, we can obtain and we can, we can really obtain something that we can see and then we can make a decision, okay, what to do to achieve the best possible result, right? But these two steps, like search for impact data and create impact data map it's only first step, let's say first two steps right because my point is how can we fix the problem how can we contribute to to solving public problem actually so imagine guys that for example okay you can create an impact data map let's say about slovenia or maribor i was in maribor twice it's great city i really like it but the thing is, okay, and now imagine that you are working together, you have this result right now, and now what to do? Let's say you discovered something super interesting, super important, that can really change the things. Because one thing is to see what to decrease to obtain the best result, but another thing is, okay, when we know what we have to do first, then we have to know how to do it. In other, in other words, what works. So, for example, when we talk about domestic violence, can be focused deterrence. When we talk about traffic accidents, could be strategy uh, very complex and so on. So this is my point, this solving machine, right? But when you have, let's say, you have great information, so you have to, you have to go to step number three, write an article. This is also sometimes I totally understand because I really like traveling and I live in every year in different country because I like it. And when you travel, you also want to do something. So I spend time with students and we work on this problem or on this on this project. But sometimes, and I completely understand, you can also pick up journalism, right? That you want to study journalism. But on the other hand, sometimes you don't know how to write an article and it's, it's totally normal. Sometimes, you know, 
some of us, you know, they know how to do it, but for others, it's not that easy to say which in, what kind of information is interesting, how to start, how to end up, and so on. So that's why I created this, oh, I almost said plantisha, after it's template in English. So this template that is like public problem solving steps, let's say, like first define a problem. Let's say, let's say tra uh, traffic accidents, right, in Slovenia. Then information, you have to gather all information. When you have all information, you understand the topic, which is super important. But when you understand the topic, you have the questions, of course, right? So you have to make an interview, questions and answers, with someone who is expert in this field. Could be a politician, could be whoever. Then, when you have information, you have also answers to your questions, you can define solution, because you should know that. Could be whatever strategy. Uh, especially what I like, for example, in New York, they implemented, I think it's called, it's called zero. Oh, okay. Uh, it's called, it's called uh, zero. And it means they are trying to implement, they are trying to implement uh, the idea from Sweden in New York. And I am super happy for that because we have to learn from each other. It would be great. And then it's outcome. So result of implementing the measures or strategy. So this is something what can really help. You have two options, of course. You can normally write an article about it. Maybe most of you would do that. Or you can use this one. For me, um, I like this one because sometimes I don't like only text. You know, I like points. I like something, you know, to be clear and so on. But it's only my perspective. But this is only help, right? So if we can go here, this is an example of the article of one of my students. I think he was from Australia. And he picked up really like uh, really the issue wars around the world. And he was actually investigating what can we do? And now it's like really current topic. Uh, what can we do to stop the war or to avoid the war and so on? And for example, guys from Oxford, uh, from university actually, they were investigating 100, 100 uh, cases uh, from the history when, when it was possible. Of course, you cannot implement this one and just to expect that it's, it's not going to, to be war, but it's good to know the examples, they are good examples, right? So he did this, and now you can see it's a bit different, like, like problem information, questions, answers, solution, outcome. Of course, it's much longer. I just want to show the example. And also my colleagues, professors, for example, uh, in Slovakia and in the United States, sometimes they, need, they use this one. And it doesn't matter if they teach, for example, journalism or something else because you can really apply it also in other fields okay so this one is just example my website like a website of this project picasso.com and you can see wars around the world and this is just example you have to scroll down if you want to see more it's just example like uh, how you can write an article as well all right then you have to publish it i'm not i'm not going to talk about about social media but uh, because I'm sure that you have some experts and great professors, they can explain you. But today we are living, you know, um, we are, we are in a world that it's really easy. You can find out anything and you can just post it on social media and the result could be great, right? So the thing is, social media is number one. But I think what is really important is when you have this information, we are still talking, we want to fix something. We want, we want to contribute to solving some public problem. Solving, in my, from my perspective, it means change the tendency, change the trend, right? So that's very important. When you write, and this is some, I think it's not very often at universities that I can see that we talk about how to write an email, right? For example, if I want to talk at some university, I want to, I, I have to write an email. If you want to publish your, your findings, your article in some media, you have to impress the journalist. So first of all, guys, have to be short. If you write an email, and it seems like hey, it's a very normal thing, but it's super important. If you write an email, please be short. Another thing, new findings, new information. And, and, and you, are, you are lucky because if you do it as a student and when it comes to university project, you can, for example, say, hi, I am, I am from the University of Maribor and I'm working on this and so on. So it's a reliable source in general. University is a reliable source for, uh, for the journalists. So we have to impress them. So be short, be interesting with new information, and you have to use reliable source. So that's media. 
And another thing is influencers is also pretty interesting because today you can just, for example, um, convince one person and next day because he or she can share your, your article, you know, you can have like so many reactions and so on. For example, I also wanted to publish uh, something about this project. I wrote to so many people and one lady, she was influencer uh, and she said, yes, I'm going to share your article and so on. And it was really a big difference. What I'm trying to say, of course, we have also so many other problems. I'm just, I'm just say, saying that it's very important, the email. And uh, for example, for me, in the first sentence, when I write an email, I'm trying to be super interesting. So, but also uh, uh, you, you cannot brag that much, but a little bit, yes. You have, for example, in my case, I said I got a Fulbright, I was at New York University and P, I have PhD, you know, these things, because I want to impress them to, okay, to get an answer and so on. In your case, it could be different, but this is, I think, very important. And again, uh, from my perspective, um, it's important, but it's not very common. But sometimes only writing an email can be a game changer. You can write an email and you can get a job. So this is some, something that is really important. For example, this is an example of the articles of my students from Malaysia, uh, Great Britain and Australia. But we were focusing more on global issues. For example, carbon dioxide, right? So we have climate change. And they were focusing on how we can use reverse solution it means from carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen. We can do it. Imagine if we can do it everywhere, it's easy. It's a reverse solution, but it's uh, right now, uh, we don't know how to do it effectively. It's super caro. Uh, it's super expensive. And uh, yes, our scientists are working on it. Or for example, ocean waves. We, if we can use ocean waves and make electricity from that, I, we can really obtain great results or cancer. We have so many now different possibilities how to fight, fight cancer, right? But these are only examples that my, my students uh, were, were writing. And what I was really impressed, to be honest, I don't know if I can say also proud of them, but for example, they, they did interview on this issue about carbon dioxide with the best experts in the world, I can say, from the United States, Australia, and so on. And exactly, they wrote an email, interesting, we are working on this, this is our findings, we want to like blah, blah, blah. And the result is they gave them interview and it's not very common, right? Because they are super busy and they can, obtain, they, they can get so many emails every day. But that's just an example how we can do it. Okay, so now we have only last two points or two steps, let's say. One is inspiration, right? Uh, you can inspire government, politicians, NGO, activists, society, individuals, it doesn't matter the individual or organization, and then can happen something. Of course, if you can inspire government and they can implement your idea into reality, it would be the best. And then it's implementation. We, we talk about measures, strategy, and the results, right? Measures could be, for example, okay, again, let's say traffic, traffic accidents, right, in Slovenia. So measure is, okay, now it's going to be allowed in the city only not 50, uh, 50 miles per hour or 50 kilometers per hour, but only 40. But this is measure that can work, okay, of course, but sometimes it's better strategy. It means in complex, not only this, but also change the law and so many other things. And then we have to check the results. And now you are maybe asking, okay, so I can find out something very interesting. I can publish it, but uh, then it's not in my hands. Well, let me show you one example, my very favorite one. This is example from, uh, from Milwaukee and the journalist called Ashley Lutheran, what she did, uh, and it was, it's really, really great article. She is from Milwaukee or she lives in Milwaukee or works for Milwaukee Journal. And uh, she wrote, the article only about um, the strategy that was implemented somewhere else, exactly in Minneapolis, when it comes to homicides or murders um, among young people, right? So she published that in, uh, I think, June or July 2015, right? And what happened? The mayor of Milwaukee also, also was reading this article and said, yes, it's great. Let's do the same, actually. Let's do the same. Uh, let's 
implement the same strategy in Milwaukee, what they did in Minneapolis. And if you can, as you can see, right, in 2015, they were like 146 deaths among young people, right? And then less 141, 119, and 100. Yeah, I should also obtain another, another year. But what I'm trying to say is that this is something what really I'm interested in because it seems like a trend. It seems like a tendency, right? It's not only, okay, so it's working. And this is something what I think is, is really, I think for me, it's inspiration, right? But one thing is that, okay, you can, you can discover whatever and then just wait, okay, let's see if politicians are going to do something. But let me show you one, let's say example, but it's kind of curiosity, uh, but it works perfectly. What happened in Colombia? Sorry for that, but now I'm Colombia, so I just want to share one example. For example, um, in 2000, 2010, 2009, and so on, there were so many murders and homicides in Pereira. Pereira, Pereira is like uh, is a city is a city in uh, in Colombia. And what happened? Because it's very normal that small amount of people is responsible for for major, uh, major, for most of the homicides, most of the murders. So what happened? But it's, of, of course, it's different than in Slovakia, Slovenia, because they are gangs, they fight against each other, and so on, right? So what they did, women, uh, women fixed it all, because uh, wives and girlfriends of gang leaders, they met, and they were talking, and they said, yes, we don't want that our, our husbands will die, and so on. So they did a pact, it's like a contract, and they say, okay, we are going to say to our husbands that we are not going to sleep with them if they continue fighting. You know what happened? The largest decrease in the history of Colombia, at least as I know, 26.5% less homicides in a year. So this is a really example, like you can say, it's like crossed leg strike. Maybe you heard about it. But it was really interesting to me because they really focused on the uh, core of the problem, I would say, right? So this is also how we can implement everything. Thank you so much. Or como se dice, or how can I say, aj, najlepšia havala za vašu pozornost. In Slovak languages, thank you. Uh, ďakujem za vašu pozornost.